Hi everyone, Sarah here. Okay, I'm trying yet again another angle, so forgive the white bar at the bottom. Um, okay, so... <laughs> this is an apology video to you guys. I am so, so unbelievably sorry that I haven't updated in the last three weeks. A lot has happened. Okay, well maybe not a lot, but I was very busy. I said in my previous video, I hope I did anyway, that I had placement coming up and I was at a hospital. And this was all the way in Monash Casey. And it was quite a distance for me because I may have my green P plates, which is the last P plates you get before full license, but I do not own a car which means I cannot drive myself there. So I have to take public transport or an Uber. And I really did not want to take an Uber because it would cost $45 to get there and $45 to get back. And that seemed far too expensive to do for like a solid 10 days because I was there for two weeks and we never work on the weekends. So 10 days. And it was just, uh, so it took me two hours to get there on public transport because so I had to take a bus and then a train and then walk. And since it would take two hours, I'd leave the house ridiculously early. So say my shift starts at seven, I would have to leave the house at five to get there on time. Therefore, I would wake up at 3.30, give my brain half an hour to boot up, and then an hour to get ready to leave. And I'd have to make all my sandwiches beforehand. And if I did a late early, it'd be even more stressful. And my parents were really lovely and they paid for the Ubers back at night and in the early morning because I had two late earlies. Otherwise I would have been functioning on three hours of sleep and on the night shift, not night shift, afternoon shift, would have gotten back at midnight. <laughs> and that doesn't sound very safe. So I was just mentally exhausted during those things. I didn't even do my reflection journals I had to do. So it was just a very exhausting time for me and I did have a video and I wanted to upload it because I had it pre-recorded and then I would have only been two weeks behind schedule. But I just forgot to do it. My brain was not functioning at all. So it did not get uploaded. Um, but I will, I'm will. i uploading like three videos today. I'm uploading this apology video. I'm uploading that video. And then I'm going to do a challenge video. And I will upload that as well. Because I'm making up three weeks of missed videos by uploading three videos in one day hopefully at least i'll be uploading this one and you may get the other two tomorrow depending on how cooperative our internet is <sighs> okay so yeah i'm so so sorry this placement was amazing i was in a mental health ward and it was <laughs> it was amazing and such a rewarding experience and I learned so much and I did so many different things and yeah, mental health matters guys, it really does. It is seriously important and at the moment with COVID, it's exasperating everything because a lot, a, lot, a lot of the people we saw in there wouldn't have been in there if it wasn't for COVID, but because of COVID, they were in there and so we had trouble because <laughs> they had troubles. Okay. Um, other things I was going to mention, since this is an update video, um, I'm going to be rereading the Trials of Apollo series, so, because the final book is coming out shortly and I am not mentally prepared to say goodbye. I am so not prepared. Um, so yes, we. I'm going to be doing that and I'll do book talks for those three books and... I have another book I need to do a book talk for. It's going to be a very short book talk, so it's a very short book, but I'll do it. And yeah, I am not prepared. And I'm trying, as you can see by the outfit I'm wearing, to get back into the Cassandra Clare mood. I am very much in a Shadowhunter's mood, but I need to read uh, City of Fallen Angels. It's her shortest one, and I still haven't finished it yet because I just can't with everything in it. 
but I need to to get to my reward that will be Clockwork Prince because I loved Clockwork Angel and I've been told Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess are even better and I'm like okay I will love them but I'm reading them in publication order so City of Fallen Angels has to be read first <sighs> it's gonna be hard okay Simon is caught in another love triangle and I'm just so dumb <sighs> Unlike with the TV show, Clary is very much the main character. So it's not like I can get away with just focusing on Magnus and Alec. I like Clary, I do. I just don't like her obsession with Jace. So I'm trying very hard to get back into that because I really want to read all of Cassandra Clare's books. I'm sure I will love them. So many of my booktubers who I trust and love, love them. So I really just want to get into it. The other thing is, I learned about a book recently because I follow an Australian booktuber, which is awesome. And she was talking about this book called Australia Day and it's written by an indigenous author. So I'm thinking of ordering that soon to help with my perspective on how indigenous Australians are suffering in Australia. Because they are very much suffering, it's not. White people! Honestly, they could kill our ancestors. <sighs> I don't know what they were thinking. Um, yeah. So, there's that. Um, I've been watching Grey's Anatomy. That is driving me slowly crazy. Because I'm trying to recognise the medical terminology. I've watched The Good Place. So I, I thought the first two seasons were the best. Um, and I've watched, and I'm re-watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, because, let's be honest, that show is fabulous. And I'm studying, I have to do an assignment this weekend, and if I can wrangle it, I'd start another one. And get all these notes done, I've got another week left to school, and then we're going on break for two weeks, and then we'll have another four weeks left, and then we're on holidays. But I will have placement at some point in December, and it will end the week before Christmas starts. So, yeah. and I'm going to have exams at some point for A&P, which is not going to be fun. So I've really got to work on my notes, and I'm starting a couple of other journals because I'm a mess. I'm starting a Shadowhunter journal and a... Journal for the Society on Netflix. Okay, I need to rant for a second. I watched the Society on Netflix. Now, I initially waited on watching it at first because with some shows, I like to wait until season two comes out to watch it and then binge watch the first two seasons because um, I just feel like that gives me a lot better grasp for the characters if I have two seasons to watch. Um... Sadly, with the society, it doesn't appear that's going to work. So I watched season one because I really wanted to watch this show. I thought it was going to be really cool. And they confirmed that season two is coming out. The scripts have been written. The cast have been informed. We had a cute little video from the cast telling us that there was going to be a season two. And I was so excited. And then Netflix pulled out the rug. And they're like, oh, we can't do it because of COVID. And yet somehow we can have season 5 of Riverdale and a third Kissing Booth movie. I see how it is. I see how it is. Cancelling shows with good LGBTQ rights. Just because we have Choni in Riverdale does not mean we get good representation. And yes, Choni is fabulous, but... It's too dramatic, that show. I can't. I didn't even get through season 1. <sighs> Meanwhile, the society is fabulous. Okay, basically, it's about these um, school kids. So they're in town. They live in a small town, and a smell came, and the kids were sent away while the adults, so the teenagers, all the high schoolers, were sent away on a camping trip while the adults tried to figure out what to do with the smell. But they get told on the trip out of town that there's a rock slide, and they have to come back. So they come back, and no one's there. The town is completely empty. And then when they try and figure a way out of town to get help, there's a huge forest surrounding it, literally cutting off the railway line and the highway. 
and so they realize they're kind of trapped and they try and do an explorative mission into the forest to see if they can get through it to someone else and that does not end well and so they have to form their own society with leaders and rules and that sort of thing and they have to ration food because obviously they're not getting any deliveries for the supermarkets and there's lots of fabulous characters in it and there's one character who needs to get hit by a bus but he was played by a lovely actor and just goes to show that how good an actor he is because he is like a lovely person but the actor the character he plays whoo and then <laughs> my two favorite characters okay there's this guy called sam he's deaf and the actor who plays him is deaf you might know him from switched at birth don't tell me the name but you know what i'm saying i don't know the name i don't know names and I just love that because we find because how often do you see a character who's deaf, let alone one that's played by an actual deaf actor? Not often. And then to top it off, he's gay, and I'm like, yes, we get both representations. And then there's this character Grizz. I won't say everything about him because spoilers, but he's a jock, and he's got longish hair. It's like it starts, it like it goes to here, and it just oh so good. And he's constantly spouting quotes, and he's really intelligent, and he quotes things like Edgar Allan Poe and Sherlock Holmes, and all this sort of thing, and he's a gardener, and he's the one that says, hey guys, we've got to come up with a farm, because the super rationing food is not sustainable. Yes, it's keeping us alive for longer, but it's not sustainable. So we need to go and find land to farm. And I'm like, Intelligence! Intelligence! Sorry, uh, my biggest thing with characters is if they're intelligent and logical, I just like, oh, yes. Though I will say this for the town, um, it, there's lots of smart girls, but there seem to be only three guys with brain cells and a fourth one that's like half a brain cell. It depends on when he uses it. And I will say this, it could use more coloured representation in it. Like, we have Gordy, who is fabulous, and he's one of the three guys with the brain cell. The other two are Sam and Grizz. And we have Bean, who honestly, I think, needs to step on, into being a major role. And she's Muslim, and she's so intelligent, and she's fabulous. And then there's Will, who is black, but rather pale black, I guess. And honestly, I'm meh about his character. I don't really care. And Jason is just an idiot, so I don't... We need more intelligent coloured people in that show. So what I was hoping is in season two, because there is... Because with all the kids put together, it's like over 250. We could bring in some other characters from the, 200, from the other 200 kids. 230 kids that haven't already been introduced. And have them be coloured and be fabulous. Could we do that, please? We'd replace some of the idiots, like Clark. Just, it's an idea. Honestly, we just need some more coloured people in that show. Like, I've been noticing this a lot lately. I've been thinking about shows, and I'm like, okay. Do they have LGBTQ representation? Do they have coloured people in prominent roles and not as, like, a side character? The answer is depressingly not enough. Really depressing. Like, I remember, honestly, when I was a kid, I remember getting really excited in Aragon. You know, one of the best series of all time. Because there was a female character in it called Masuda, who was black, and she was, like, one of the best characters in the entire book. And leader of the rebels. Um, yeah, so I just, I notice it a lot now, and even with dolls, like... I had a black Barbie, I remember, and I was really excited by that, and I got really excited with the Bratz because it, each one was a distinctive race. Jade was um, Asian, um, East Asian race, uh, Sasha was African American, Yasmin, I believe, was Latina, and Chloe was white. And yes, I know there's more races, but it was a good start. We just need to introduce the other ones. 
Where is Bobby? Depressingly enough, it was always the white white girl with blonde hair. <laughs> like, when I was growing up, I had a black baby born, and my parents scoured for that. Anyway, uh, this got off topic. The point is, The Society is an amazing show and should be saved and actually produced. You wrote the scripts, give them to someone else who will produce it, you cowards. Because I am beyond furious with you. I'm, I'm doing a journal for the society. I can't cope, okay? I can't. I need season two. Okay, there was a couple in that show that I just need a resolution for. I need them to be solid and together. And just... <laughs> I need them back together. <laughs> this is like when Alec broke up. I'm not okay. I, I could genuinely start, I genuinely start crying right now. Okay, so I think that's it for my update. I'm trying to think of anything else happened to me. I may have a wisdom tooth coming in. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this very random video at this interesting angle, and I will see you very shortly, because I'm about to record the book talk while I think of it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. Like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe if you did, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys!